The Sweet Sound of Success show is brought to you by The Mentor Studio. The Mentor Studio is an exclusive mentoring and training program for social influencers, business owners, entrepreneurs, coaches, and startups, bringing personal development to the underserved around the world. And brought to you by Success Strategists, simple strategies that work to develop your business with flow and ease using proven strategies and the right tactics. This is the Sweet Sound of Success with Sue Wilhite, success attraction expert. Huda Bach is a leading expert on professional image and personal brand. Over the last 30 years, she has personally worked with over 900 women and has spoken before and coached thousands more. She has appeared on numerous televised business talk shows and was a regular guest on business talk radio programs in the San Francisco Bay Area. Welcome, Huda. Yay, it's so nice to be with you. Yes, and we just discovered that we're in the Bay Area together. So this is awesome. We're practically neighbors. Um, we are neighbors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I am so looking forward, Huda, to getting your hero's journey because this is this is my favorite thing. Um, but for those of my audience who have no clue what this hero's journey thing is and why in the world would somebody have a podcast about it, um, this is about the entrepreneur's hero's journey because entrepreneurs are heroes. I, I, if you've never thought of that concept, truly, we all are. We're doing the work, right? And so the hero's journey is a collection of points on a cycle. They're elements in a story cycle that the mythologist Joseph Campbell discovered as he was studying myths and legends and stories all over the world. And we're not gonna do all 16. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody say thank you. <laughs> uh, we're only doing five of those, which um, I think are relevant to the hero's journey. And they are the ordinary beginning, um, the call to action, whatever prompted you to get into this in the first place, the big hairy monsters. And sometimes they're literal hairy monsters and sometimes they're woven into the call up to action. And how did you deal with them? And sometimes the answer is, if we get that blended in, allies, mentors, coaches, win beneath your wings. Who helped you? One of my previous guests, we talked all about helping and you know, accepting help and helping. So who helped you? And then there are the other folks. Joseph Campbell calls this the journey home. And when you become an entrepreneur, it's like somebody came with a magic wand and went, bing, you're now an entrepreneur and you are transformed. Every cell in your body is a different cell. <laughs> you are a different person when you become an entrepreneur. And the fairy godmother didn't bonk everybody with that wand. <laughs> so they're not kind of with it and they are looking at a different movie in a different theater. <laughs> so. Well, how do you deal with those folks who are going, how do you spell that? And aren't you going to get a real job? Yep. So Huda, yep. what was your ordinary beginning? <laughs> My ordinary beginning started many moons ago, Sue. <laughs> it actually, I've almost, I'm going to, um, now that I'm hearing you, I will start with the beginning beginning, but I also want to say, and I'll tack this on at the end is that I have had a second one three years ago. Yeah. So I, I did. So sometimes you, it happens, you know, it is a spiral. Right. So right. I didn't start from the beginning, beginning, but I, but I would like to leave some time actually, because I think it may be interesting for people yeah. to hear the second iteration of it. Yeah. My it, beginning started, so I'm from the Middle East and I grew up around the fashion industry. Never in a million years thinking that I would actually be 
in the fashion industry myself. It was just my mom's side of the family and, you know, just high end clothing. My dad was a celebrity of his own right. And so we were just around celebrities and ambassadors. And so my final school every year of my life, we were in a different school, sometimes different countries. So by the final school was the American School of Kuwait. I did not want to switch anymore. So I came to the States for college. Okay. So I'm studying business. I have my business degree. And then I specialized in hotel management. So far, it's kind of the intellectual part of me. This is my path. This is what I'm doing. Aced everything. Top of my class. We did it. I got a couple of internships. And even my internships were international because that's where I wanted to head. Then the unexpected (laughs) is that I got injured actually at work and I could not continue to work in the hotels. I had to take off a few months Then I started bit by bit working a couple of hours every other day. So while I was recovering from that, then I'm like, oh, let's see what else is there because my mind was sharp, but my body was hurt. So I ended up interning with a a very famous image consultant. And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I remember a lot of this stuff. Now at this point, I'm 23, I'm already married, but I, who's a professional makeup artist back then, didn't even own enough makeup. I had to borrow my sister's makeup, (laughs) right? So you're talking like somebody who went into this field almost, what would be the word? Um, Sometimes my English at the end of the day. there's a word in kind of religious studies where they call it neophyte. And it's like, you're coming in totally yeah. naked into this, no idea what you're getting into. Yes, yes, it would be that, exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm interning here, working part-time there. And then little by little, I ended up moving from the East Coast. I started speaking professionally, came to California. This is more than 30 years ago now. And then just started my speaking business and working with women in this way. Now, what was even more interesting is that I used to be so shy. I mean, I was painfully shy. I had to ask my mother before coming to college. She had to ask where the bathroom was because I would never talk to a stranger and say, hey, where's the bathroom? I'd rather sit there holding it in (laughs) than talking to anyone. But I had to fly by myself. By then we were in Spain. So I had to fly from Spain to the States by myself for college. You kind of had to, you had to like deal with it, right? So this is what was one of my biggest, scariest moments was actually talking to people. And then you fast forward. So that was like in the late eighties, I'm aging myself here, um, early eighties actually. That by the time I graduated and started my own business, my first paid speaking engagement was 1990. Somehow I did makeup for one person She liked it, offered me to do this, worked with someone else on that. And then that person said, hey, come speak to our company. And before I knew it, I got not sucked into it, but it was just such a natural next step. Right. Right. Never would you have expected somebody, you know, I was the new kid on the block nine years in a row. (laughs) Different languages, different countries. I'm like, like this at the beginning of every year. And super quiet. So that's kind of how mine started. Wow. Wow. How <laughs> it was just, you know, you just kind of kept going and the universe said, here, try this. And you went, it oh, was. Okay. and the universe said, here, try this. And you went, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And you know, what's interesting, gosh, you're taking me back into history here <laughs> is that the first time someone said, Hey, do you talk about X? Now we're talking early, early nineties. And I'm like, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, it it wasn't like they weren't asking me to do engineering type things. It was something that I knew, but certainly hadn't talked about before. So it was digging in. This is prior to Google for all your younger listeners. This is before all of the self-help movement. But honestly, I thank you actually, Sue, for reminding me because it was truly guidance. It was truly heaven led mm-hmm. moment by moment and step by step. Because if you had have said that, if you'd have said that to me earlier, I'd have thought you were nuts. Well, Joseph Campbell says, you cannot understand the shape of your life 
and the path that you have taken and the, the I, I think he calls it the milestones or the stepping stones along the way until you look back and look at these stepping stones and go, oh yeah, those, those were all connected. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that, that's exactly. And that's a blessing. Yes. Because if you were shown it, you'd free, I, I'll speak for myself. If I were shown that when I was not ready, I would have freaked out because truly it's stepping stones, is it not? Yep. It is one step and then you're given enough information, not enough to bog you down and, and make you go run, <laughs> but enough to move you another inch and another inch. Right, right, exactly. So were there any big hairy monsters besides shyness um, that you got to play with? It was because for me, this is not, I have never actually said this publicly before. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I will say it. Um, I had a, I had a difficult childhood. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of coming out like this, what, I mean, to think I've been speaking professionally since 1990. This is the first time anyone's heard me say this, whatever year this is, right? It's a long time. But it, I think there was a part of me that thought, even though I'm not talking about whatever happened, it was still weird because I've come from an area where, especially as an Arab woman, um, quiet, we don't tell, you don't, you, you know, it is patriarchal for sure, but at least it's overtly patriarchal. Um, so you knew what you were getting into. But for me to be open and speak, even if I'm not speaking about what had happened, but just the idea of speaking out and being honest and stepping into power, that is all, that was big. Right. Just me marrying an American hmm. all those years ago, I would say 95% of my family did not talk to me. My immediate mother, father, you know, and things have turned around since then because I've since become a pioneer and several of my cousins and others have married foreigners, but there were hairy monsters. There were a lot to overcome. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's huge. Good for you. In hindsight, yay me. But at the moment it's like, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. right. So who were some of the allies and the coaches and the cheerleaders that helped you through that? Oh, my mother was, has passed a few years ago. And I would say that she was for, by far my biggest cheerleader. And she was an, a pioneer in her own right, because she was the first woman to drive in Kuwait, Arab woman to drive in Kuwait. Oh, wow. Yeah, she, she made the news. I mean, she, her driver's license number was 19. Yeah, yeah. You know? So she was definitely, I mean, there was a lot of things that she had done and it paved the way for me. She was the first amongst the whole, and you know, the Arab families were huge. And she was the first among all, uh, all our, our, her siblings to work outside. I mean, so there was a lot of things that she had done. So I'd say first and foremost, it was her. And then I'd really say it was just along the ways because initially when I started, I did not have mentorship, mm -hmm. but once I moved to California, so 1994 is when I really started to get more of the coaching. And way back then, I remember paying $1,500 a month for coaching, which was an exorbitant amount back then. Yeah. But every single time that I paid for coaching, I always recouped it. Yes. And made some, you know, so I would really say, so I don't have a specific one person other than my mother. Mm -hmm. to, to have seen that and see that's possible. But you got help. I did because I think it takes a village. It's I know not. it takes a village to raise a child, but I truly believe it takes a village. I mean, look what we're doing here today. Yes, yes. It takes, it takes peers and, and love and generosity of spirit. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the journey home then we've actually kind of, touched a little bit on that for you know the folks back home didn't necessarily get it about what it was no it took years yeah it wow. took years and it took the gulf war yeah. and it took everybody being you know it was like we the roll of the dice and, and thrown about 
And so I have family in almost every country right now, certainly throughout Europe, some everywhere in the Middle East and in Canada and here. And so we are everywhere. And I think things have opened up, you know, with the internet, things have opened up with cable television, you know, every little piece, the world is becoming smaller and things are not so scary anymore. My husband isn't as scary and he's not this weird, you know, entity. Right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit, you hinted at the beginning about your second yeah, part two. I call the sequel. Right? <laughs> my sequel. So okay. Two, and then you've got the sequel. <laughs> I do. So my sequel is now just over three years ago, I was in an accident. Ooh. And mind you, I was stopped at a traffic light about a quarter of a mile from my house. Mm. Going to school in the morning, taking my daughter to school, just sitting in a car. And I saw the car coming. Long and the short, she hit me, I hit a truck mm. and I ended up with a brain injury. And so, and I always say it sounds traumatic, it was traumatic, but thankfully I'm, I'm better, I'm, I'm well. But there was a time where it, the way it affected me was my speech and my vision. Mm-hmm. And so it was the, the really the hardest part of it, I would say, is that you, you sit there and English is not my first language. So it was easier to speak in Arabic. So my husband is American and my daughter understands. But I tell you, they had to like, what's the word? Amp it up <laughs> and, and start to understand what I'm saying, because it was a little bit harder to translate. Mm-hmm. And my biggest fear once the English came back more easily is that I was thinking, if I can barely, and it took me that long to string a sentence, is that the end of my career? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there were times, you know, it took me, oh gosh, more than eight months to drive. And the first time you sit behind a wheel and you're saying to your foot, okay, put the brakes on, put the brakes on. And the brain saw it and heard it, but the foot didn't align and I could see mm-hmm. the woman, you know, so then it was two more months before I got in the car. So those things were scary. Again, had someone told me, Oh no, you'll be fine in another 18 months. You'll be fine. But it's not, but it, you don't have that. So it's a minute by minute, day by day, three months sitting in the dark, literally the first three months in the dark. Yes. So, So it was. And then the metamorphosis is that, you know what? I no longer wanted to do what I used to do. I wanted to work more on the inner image. And I'd been saying that and saying that. (laughs) <laughs> and getting suckered into doing more of the image yeah. consulting. Yeah. And finally, when this accident happened and all of this, I'm like, I heard you. I get it. <laughs> it was a literal divine two by four. It was because I saw the whisper and the thump and the boom and the that. But then the crash, there was no denying because I couldn't do anything for 18 months. Like, okay, Huda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I got it. And now whenever people tell me just to do something with image, I'm like, only if it has to do inner image first Mm -hmm. with the outer, because I could dress anybody up. I could make anybody look gorgeous. I mean, I've worked with 900 women. It's easy. But if the person herself, and I've worked 20 years, I worked with men, but if the person isn't ready or isn't aligned with how the transformation is going to look, they will revert right back. Yeah, it won't take it just won't take you will not shine you will not step into your entire being if you're only half assed if you're only half baked. Yes, yes. Yeah, I totally agree. So that was the biggest metamorphosis for me is not just I'm well enough I can walk and drive and talk again normally, but to honor to honor that divinity that has said for a while now, "Mm, that's not your path. You need Mm -hmm. to do more. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the inner game, the inner work, the inner, you, you, the philosophy that I tell people, my, my personal philosophy is what you see in your life outside is what's going on inside. So if you don't like that, it means that you don't like this. Yes. It's a mirror. It's a hard message for people to get. 
And, yeah. and people don't have the ears to hear it, but you're right. A lot of us don't have the ears to hear that or don't believe it if when we hear it. Right, because we filter it. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. So do not wait for that huge accident and a brain injury. I mean, I'm grateful I, I recovered. It was a long it was a long process. It's not easy. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm so close. I but I, but Sue, I really wanted to emphasize what you said, because the way that I do image now is I used to keynote about it, but really what I only do now is I say, there's four components to your image. And most people think physical, your hair, your clothes. Mm -hmm. It is. Yes. It's also your mental, your emotional and your spiritual. And until, and I'm, unless all are aligned, you will walk in contracted. You will walk in not feeling like you belong in that room. You will not walk in like you own it. And my whole thing is for you to own the stage, to own it and shine in any spotlight. Yes. And it's, um, it becomes an integrated whole when you're like that. And it's not just that you've put something on the shell of a body and you're kind of carting it around on top of your body, right? It's, yes. it's it, right. It's, it's just this thing that's on top of your body. If you don't own it, if you're not in alignment with it, then it's just a piece of cloth that's hanging off your body. And yeah. Nothing. And it, exactly. <laughs> and, well, and, and thank you for even saying that because and it can count against you. It, it can be against you because you're feeling uncomfortable. Yes, yes. And the energetics when you're uncomfortable and you're networking, like let's say I'm wearing something and every five seconds I'm adjusting my bra strap or every five seconds I'm like, I'm not comfortable with this hairstyle or what or the shoes. You may not understand why I'm distracted, but you're going to just say, next, you're not going to sit there long enough to uncover why. Right. Yeah. So speaking of gifts. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> you have something to share with our audience. I do. You know, it is a fun, it's a fun gift. So it's not something deep, but the best way to say it is to just go to my website because it's a bit of a, I don't want anyone yet to so just go below on the website and it's Huda com, which is H U D for David, A B for boy, A A K.com. And there's also an every, uh, every month I do 10. So click on the free strategy session. So it's 30 minutes, not a sales pitch, but ask whatever question you have, whether it's your headshot, how you're coming through your, your own inner outer game. Happy to help out. Wonderful. Thank you. That is a very extraordinary, generous gift. Thank I you. love it. I absolutely love doing that, but I can, I, can, I have to limit to 10. Right. Um, and some months I'm not able to, but yes, absolutely. Please go on and, and feel free to schedule. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Huda, for being such a wonderful, inspirational guest and thank having you. a sequel to the hero. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one, get one. <laughs> So rarely. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so thank you for being my guest. Thank you so much. Pre pleasure. And thank you, my audience of the sweet sound of success. your dreams for your business. You know what drives me crazy? Really smart business owners denying their talents because they've been taught it has to be hard. 
because they've been taught that they don't deserve their gifts, that they're not worth anything. They've been taught that their gender means they can't express their genius. I'm Sue Wilhite, and I want you to have access to your genius. I want you to go out and rock the world with your genius. So I created the Call to Action Coaching Program. It's all about getting to the heart of you and what you've got to share with the world to make a profitable business that thrives and allows you to make a difference in the world. Click the link to sign up for the Call to Action Coaching Program today. Don't let your genius go unnoticed.